So I made some new custom keycaps and I put pennies and UV resin inside a keyboard. I made the keyboard go from this to this to this and this. Hey everyone, it's Lily or Cool Rice Bunnies and we are back with another keyboard video. Gamdius was kind enough to send me their Hermes E3 60% keyboard. This is not a sponsored video and like always, you'll be hearing my honest thoughts. This isn't my first time modding a keyboard and I wanted to be a little bit more experimental with some mods I've seen on YouTube. The keyboard comes with 19 pre-installed RGB lighting effects, and with the black keys and intense looking font, it definitely gives off a gamer vibe. That's why I wanted to make some cute custom keycaps for it out of polymer clay and resin, which I'll be showing later in the video. The keycaps are ABS double shot backlit keycaps with printed on sub legends. I don't love ABS keycaps because they tend to be made cheaper and they get shiny over time. They are also less durable than PBT keycaps and produce a different sound. But of course, that all comes down to preference. There is a white version of the keyboard and you get the option of brown, black, blue, or red Atomu switches. I went with linear reds even though I am a tactile switch fan. These are optical mechanical switches, not to be confused with hot swappable optical switches. So don't try to take them out unless you can desolder them. The stabilizer on the spacebar had very little factory lubing and the other stabilizers looked like they didn't have any at all. All right, to start modding, we need to unscrew the five screws to remove the plate and the PCB from the case. The case feels durable, but light. So I wanted to fill up the board with something heavier to give it a less hollow sound. Enter the pennies. I saw this from YouTuber Flipples who does amazing things with keyboards to get the best thock sounds. I just wanted to try it out by layering some pennies here and there and then sealing them into the case with UV resin since I didn't have double-sided tape like the original video. After I cured the UV resin for about eight minutes, I covered the pennies with some painter's tape. If you don't wanna put pennies inside your keyboard, you can always fill your case with foam to decrease vibrations, add weight, and make the keyboard more quiet. And then just for laughs, I put painter's tape on the back of the PCB, which is also known as the Tempest Tape Mod. I should have put on at least three layers, but I only did one layer. Layers of tape will help with any keyboard ping you might have. The stabilizers on this keyboard are pretty raggly, so I wanted to lube them as best as I could, even though I couldn't take them out of the board. I saw a video on how to lube keyboard stabilizers without desoldering by Fire and Darkness, which helped a lot. And now here's my kind of scuffed sound test because I only used my camera and not my external microphone. For my keycaps, I decided to use epoxy resin instead of UV resin. The UV resin I used in my last keycap video got really yellow over time because of sunlight exposure, and I noticed that UV resin shrinks when curing, which epoxy resin doesn't do. Very thick. After pouring equal parts of the resin and hardener, I mixed it with a popsicle stick for about five minutes, making sure to scrape the sides of my container. After that, I let the resin sit while covered for five minutes so bubbles could rise to the top. 
I used three different types of iridescent glitters so the RGB of the keyboard could really shine through. And once I removed any dust from the stem molds with the duct tape, I filled them with clear resin, making sure to only drop the resin on one side of the opening so it could slowly fill up the mold without any big air bubbles. Then I scooped some of the glitter resin into the keycap mold with a popsicle stick, making sure to drop it into the one corner and let it fill up the rest of the way on its own so again, bubbles wouldn't get stuck in the corners. With all the excess resin, I mixed it all together and I put it in a trinket dish mold I had. It was, surprisingly, the perfect amount. <laughs> I think the hardest part about using a keycap mold like this is getting the stem as straight as possible. I used a keycap that was inserted into the mold as a reference and I tried my best to make sure that they were all properly aligned. Of course, there was some spillage and I had to do a lot of adjusting. Once I was satisfied, I covered the molds with a plastic container to prevent dust intruders and I let them cure overnight. My little trinket dish came out great, but there were a lot of mini micro bubbles, probably due to all the mixing I did, and the fact that the resin was kind of cold and thick didn't help either. I forgot to use my heat gun to help with that. I also had issues with taking out some of the keycaps because the resin was sticking to the mold. I did not experience this at all during my first try, and I had to cut the keycaps from the mold with scissors. I was kind of disappointed about that. Once I got them all removed, I trimmed off the excess resin, and then I sanded them off camera. Now time to see how straight I got the stems to be. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give them like a 70%. Here's how they sound. And look how pretty they are with the RGB. Honestly, I would make a few more blank keycaps to use as my WASD keys. Now that the bases are made, it's time to sculpt the top parts with polymer clay. I wanted to make three keycaps with darker clay colors for the black keycaps, and one keycap with a more white and green theme for the matcha keycaps. To start off, we're going to make No Face from Spirited Way. Take some black clay and shape it into a little thumb shape for his body, then flatten an oval of white clay for his mask and press it on. I want a no face to stand near a pile of coins, so I just flattened little balls of gold clay for that. The next thing we'll make is a sushi roll. Take some clay and shape it into a little marshmallow shape. You can use scrap clay for this if you want since you won't see it in the end. Then roll out a sheet of black clay and cut it into a long rectangle to wrap around the clay for the seaweed. Blend the seam as best as you can. After that, it's time to make the grains of rice by cutting up small pieces of white clay and rolling them between your fingers. For the sushi filling, I took some light green, orange, and pink colored clay and shaped them together into a rough circular shape. Put that in the middle and then begin adding your grains of rice. You can choose to add a clay face here, but I'll be painting the details later. For the matcha keycaps, I'll be making these adorable snow mochi rabbits mixed together some white and translucent clay as well as green translucent clay. I also used red translucent clay that I already had a package of. Cut some pieces of the white translucent clay for the bodies and shape them into little bun shapes or half egg shapes, with one end being a little more tapered than the other.
Then add little balls of clay for the tail at the fatter end. After that, roll out some of the translucent green clay, cut it into little sprinkles, and roll them into what looks like long pieces of rice. Then flatten them out between your fingers and add them to the back of the bunnies for their ears. Finally, take balls of red translucent clay and place them on the bunnies for their eyes. To make the leaf that the bunnies sit on top of, roll out a big teardrop shape with the translucent clay and flatten it. Then with a needle tool or a toothpick, make some lines in the leaf. This is optional, but for extra security, I put some liquid polymer clay between my bunnies and the leaves. Last but not least, we'll be making Luna P from Sailor Moon. I mixed together some purple and black clay to get this darker purple color, and then rolled a chunk of it into a ball for the head. Then I started shaping some pieces of clay into rounded triangle shapes. I decided in the end that I only needed one of them, and I cut it in half to work as both of the ears. I had to play around with this a couple of times to get the sizing right, but when I did, I blended the ears on with a needle tool and smoothed it out with my fingers. For the antenna, I put some white clay at the bottom of a head pin and I cut it down to size so I could fit it into the clay like so. And that's it! After they're done baking and have cooled off, it's time to paint on all the details with acrylic paint. No face was a little tricky and I had to map out most of his details with a micron ink pen. I also used the micron for Luna P to both map out the facial features and make the black outlines around the paint after painting. Once everything dried, I attached the clay pieces onto the keycaps with E6000 glue. And then off camera, I glazed some of the keycaps with UV resin to give it an extra shine and protect the paint. So here they are, the finished keycap babies. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out for my second try at Artisan Keycaps. I think in the future I'll choose a different keycap mold that doesn't put them at a slant, but other than that, I am really satisfied with these. I love how they look on the keyboards and the clear resin with the iridescent glitter is everything with the RGB. Do you have a favorite? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.